What is up guys, my name is Nick Howell. Welcome to the NetApp YouTube channel and thank you for joining us for this series of videos on NetApp Cloud Volume Service for Google Cloud. We're gonna have a whole series of these for you starting with this introduction, going over the dashboard, how to set it up, how to create your first volume and how to manage that with your workloads. So tune in, grab a drink, sit back and enjoy. And with some movie magic, we're gonna kick over to the on-screen demo now. So here we are in the dashboard of the Google Cloud console where we're gonna take a look at all of the stuff that you have available to you in Google Cloud. Now this is the NetApp Cloud Volume service for your particular project, but if we wanna get down to look at our actual volumes, we can scroll all the way down and find it at the bottom underneath Partner Solutions. You'll see Cloud Volumes here and you can even pin it to your panel so you get it every single time. So let's go ahead and click on volumes. And then we can get a look at what volumes we have in here, right? And let's take a look at the information we have available to us. We can see the IDs of our volumes. We can see the names of the volumes. We can see what region they're located in, the life cycle, state details, service levels. We also show you your mount targets, what protocol they're mounted with. And lastly, we're showing you the cap allocated capacity of each of these volumes to take advantage of. In addition, uh, you can look at the uh, on-demand snapshots of each volume that you can take as needed, as well as the active directories that this is mounted to, such as if you have a uh, domain services and things like that as well inside of Google Cloud. Let's click create and go ahead and create a new volume. We're going to give it a name. We're going to call it App Vol 1. Uh, we have six regions available currently that we can choose from. Uh, because we have existing workloads in US Central 1, we're going to choose that one. You'll see that it gives it a volume, a friendly name uh, automatically. You can customize that as you see fit. We have standard premium extreme service levels. Let's go ahead and pick extreme. And you'll see that this is loosely based on the bandwidth available. And you'll this is this is is what gives you that linear scale for as you add more capacity, you're also going to increase the amount of bandwidth that you have. We're going to give it a capacity of one terabyte, which will, uh, as you grow that terabyte, that's where you get your uh, megabytes per second per terabyte from. Uh, you can see we support three all different protocols here. We can support both NFS at the same time, but for this one, we're just going to choose NFS v3. We're going to put it into the VPC that we have existing where our other workloads already are. Quick little poll and we'll update it. Uh, we're going to add our export policy. Now, this is necessary to do some IP-based access control for our export policies to tell which workloads, which machines can mount this volume. So we're going to give it read-write access to any, right, uh, in this example. And we're, we have to choose one of the protocol types for matching. So we're going to choose this allow matching for NFS v3 since our clients are running v3. That's it. Click save and you're going to go create the volume. And you'll see literally in a matter of seconds that this volume gets created for you without any other effort. This is, this is the beauty of this. This is the beauty of a managed service. Not once did we touch any storage controller nerd knobs. Did we do any aggregate or RAID group tuning? None of that kind of stuff. We created a volume in a matter of a minute. Now that it's available, we can jump over and look at our instances that we have running, our virtual machines. They're not in the same availability zones, even though they are all in US Central 1. Uh, and you can see their IP information and you have some quick shortcuts to connect to them if you need to. Let's jump over and look uh, at each of these though at, at the command line. We're gonna do a quick DF-H and look at the file systems on each of these machines. You'll see that they're basically identical, right? No external mounts already there. Uh, we can come over here and one of the other things that NetApp provides in Cloud Volume Service is what I like to refer to as the cheat sheet. We give you a set of mount instructions that gives you some tool, some commands that you need to run that will load your NFS utilities. You'd be surprised how many distributions don't come with these natively. So run them, whichever you have, either Red Hat based or Debian based. Uh, make sure you get those NFS client utilities installed. The next thing we're gonna do is grab our directory, right? So we're gonna do a sudo make dir with our volume name, and it's a good best practice to keep your directory name on your file system be the same as what you're gonna mount, the volume that you're gonna mount to it. So we'll go over and we'll do our sudo make dir on all three of our instances, right? We'll make the directory exactly the same. 
And then we're going to go back over to our cheat sheet and we're going to grab the mount command that we give you guys that has built-in mounting best practices using a 64K uh, block size, all of that kind of good stuff. Read, write, version three of the protocol. We're going to drop that onto each of these volumes. We're going to mount this volume to all three of these instances. Let's drop into our directory, right? Let's do that on each one of these machines. We're just making a, a one gig file out of uh, a, using a DD command. So it shouldn't take more than a second or two to, to get that up and running. We're gonna do it there on the first machine. But the fun part of this is, is when we LS from each of the machines, we can now see the file in that volume, right? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab an FIO command here, drop that onto the first machine to do uh, a big string. We don't need to do this on every one, so we're gonna blow this one up so you guys can see the full command. Pause the video right here if you need to grab a copy of that and, and run it against your stuff so that you can compare apples to apples. So we're gonna do this. This will take about 10 seconds or so to, to let it run, and we're just gonna let this finish. We're not speeding this up in any way. We want you guys to see the full result of this performance. We're expecting about 128 megabytes per second because this is a one terabyte volume. So if you remember the extreme service level, it's 128 megabytes per second per terabyte. And that's how we scale the bandwidth up with the amount of capacity. So if you wanted to get 256 megabytes per second, pop quiz, you would need a two terabyte volume. And the beauty of this is as you need add more capacity, you automatically gain more bandwidth. So we're almost done here and bang, there we go. Now, if we look at aggregate bandwidth, agger B, you can see we got 126,000 kilobytes per second or just shy of 128 megabytes per second within tolerances. The beauty of this is if you go and add another terabyte or another 10 terabytes, you will be able to get over a gigabyte per second in throughput. So there you have it guys. Thank you very much for joining us for this series on NetApp Cloud Volume Service for Google Cloud. We we'll hope you stay tuned. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn your notifications on because we've got a lot more videos coming. The next one up is going to be on SMB. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Take care.